This is Duke University. I wanted to share a little bit about some of the early thinking that we're doing at the UNC system level, and to do it sort of inductively by sharing just an example of the kind of initiative we're trying to get started, and hopefully that will give you a window into the larger thinking. That's just my excuse for not having larger thinking ready to share yet. Um, I've been in this role for two months, um, and I think there's you know, a lot of work to do and a lot of catch up that we have to do. Um, but we're, we're um, I think, living in a moment of two competing extremist discourses about online learning and innovation. And one of them is the sort of paranoid discourse that you hear and read about in the Chronicle of Higher Education all the time that says that MOOCs are destroying our system and that online learning is lower quality. We're going to turn all of our professor class into adjuncts and on and on and on. The other is equally extreme in its naivete in its optimism and its Pollyannish view that we can solve all of the problems of higher education, all the access problems, all the cost problems, Bomal's cost disease, on and on. If we just put content online, um, we'll, we'll solve these. And it's very difficult to actually do work in the field where you're operating in, with, with these kind of like extreme discourses you know, competing for the attention of policymakers, of leaders, of parents, of students. So the way I approach, you know, this challenge is to actually, like, start working, to get into the weeds and start building, and to bring a kind of learn-by-doing approach into the way we run the university system that I think is somewhat new and somewhat original. Um, I think, you know, in, on panels like this, you'll often hear about great new applications and great new tools and what, you know, what's coming out of Silicon Valley or American Underground or whatever. And the way I think about this, what we need really most badly from the technology community is not necessarily the tools or the code or the software. It's the methodology by which that software is made. And this goes under several names. Um, you, some people call it sort of like the lean startup approach or the iterative approach or the incubating approach. But the basic idea is that the only really important learning when you're building innovative products and services happens when you're doing it. And you just need to launch something, try it, get started, and then gather as much feedback as you possibly can from the field. Build that feedback in and do it better the next time. And I think you know, this does happen in higher education. I think you know, one course, courses get better the second time that they're delivered. And I think the people who design those courses and deliver them do better the next time because they're iterating a little bit. But we don't really do this systematically. We don't, certainly don't do it at the administrative level at the way, in the way we run our institutions. So, so the thing that I'm trying to do to sort of bring this iterative learn by doing approach into the system is to create a new incubator that's modeled on a startup incubator, but it's focused on designing new courses. And the basic premise is that when you're building a new course, there's a unique moment of opportunity for reflecting on instructional practice and on design. Even if you've been teaching for 35 years, when you're building a new course, you have to think about how you're structuring the material how you're going to spread it out over a certain amount of time, how you're going to break it down into different modules. And I think that creates really a unique moment of opportunity for us to work with faculty members, catch them at that, in that moment, and give them great support, some community as well, which I think is what you get in incubators that goes beyond just the technical support and the mentoring. Um, and what we're going to do is bring together a group of faculty from across our 17 institutions this summer and support them in a fellowship program that won't just fund them, but will create that community and hopefully give them that, that kind of a flavor of that iterative approach that comes from the startup world and build great courses together. Um, and they're not going to be perfect, and the program is not going to be perfect, but we'll do it better the next time. 
Um, we're calling it the Instructional Innovation Incubator at UNC, I3 at UNC. Um, and it's, it's going to take place this summer. And I, I think this is original to do at the system level. I know of some individual campuses that support faculty members. There's a lot of grant money for faculty members. But what we're, what we're trying to do is go beyond just the funding. Because in, in many cases, it's not the funding that's really the bottleneck to great innovation. You can do this stuff pretty cheaply. The tools are pretty cheap. What's lacking, I think, is the opportunity for feedback, for peer learning, for empathetic kind of design. Um, and I would love to think with you today about how we can make it, create, create student voice in that as well. And I think that's really essential part of this that I'm still in the process of thinking through. And 